This video is inspired by you, Salish. Thank you for leaving a comment on my video and asking how I write a scientific paper because indeed I have never spoken in detail how I prepare one. So today's video is for you, Salish. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support and practical tips during your PhD. A paper is not meant for you to read from cover to cover. The way you're writing it is also not in order. So today I'm going to give you my little secret from postdoc life on how I have learned to write a paper in the order that makes sense. There's no better time than writing during your experiment about your methodology and you're more likely to follow up with your lab notebook. If you want more instruction on how you write a good lab notebook, this is a video there. After the experiment, you can feel free to edit whatever it's not included, but you need to get it started during your experiment. Think about any illustration needed because if you have a unconventional way of doing certain work, you might want to include a diagram as figure one of your paper. So make sure you write your methodology before and during your experiment. Make that illustration while you are doing your research. After you have finished your experiment, you streamline what are the panels of figures you will need. You must have already met with your PI, your postdoc in the lab. Start with creating just the list of figures, not even writing the result. Make the list of figures. Go back to each figure and annotate them, design them well so that they look final, comparing it with what has already been published. I've made a video on how to reverse engineer a paper and that talks about the logic flow of figures and this is the time you read all this key opinion in your field, how you present certain sets of data. After you have a list of figures, then you can start writing the result. Make everyone that is co-authoring your paper to be on the same page. How are we understanding this data set? Are we presenting this data? Are we not presenting this data because of some reason? Because if someone by the very last stage of your manuscript writing say, I don't agree with how you interpret this figure. You know what? You should have set up the meeting before you even start putting word on that manuscript. So have that meeting, finalize the list of figures, have a consensus, what are the take home messages for each figure, then start writing. Save you so much time because if you don't have a common ground, that's how you get into a rabbit hole of not concluding your research article. The two things that you will write right after you have the result would be the first paragraph of your discussion and the last paragraph of your introduction. Your last paragraph of introduction always define the scope and objective of the paper that you are writing. This can be done right after you have the final list of figures. First paragraph of discussion usually reiterate what has been discovered. That's why it's hinging on your list of figures and all your discovery. In the end, there might be an outline of thought that you want to follow in your introduction and your discussion. And again, that's something you need to first come up, sit down with your PI and postdoc in the lab, find out what are the worthwhile points to discover more, research more in literature and build that topic sentences with supporting evidence in the literature. That will save you a ton of time, not branching out to something that is irrelevant, save you a lot of time to put the pieces back together. Compare your work with your favorite author and how is your work different from them? Then maybe you can comment on that and say your work is unique in certain way. But also I've already spoken about how you should follow the style and basic logic flow. If your work in some aspect has been quite well developed, then you shouldn't reinvent the wheel by making it too difficult to understand. So I hope this brief summary save you some effort and time and going to help you streamline your process of preparing your publication. When you are still writing your experiment, a lot of people complain saying, oh, it's impossible to do any writing. It's hard for me to keep my writing every day. By the way, if you are not writing every day, I hope this video is going to save you some contemplation and you're going to be motivated to do at least 30 minutes a day writing. Because if you are in PhD or postdoc, writing academically, reading and thinking academically is your primary job. Start your day every morning or finish your day every evening with 30 minutes of reading and writing. Whatever that takes for you to get your paper written, including making illustration, should be counted as your writing hour. That sounds a lot easier to manage 30 minute writing, right? 
if you keep doing that over three years, you will thank yourself and you will feel more scholarly than ever before. That's the training of a PhD. If you're skipping that, like skipping the gym, you will become really sad when you get to the point of finishing. You feel like a fraud and you start having all kinds of issues. Please comment below. Do you apply any of my tips here and does it help you? If you appreciate this virtual coffee and if my food for thought is helping you to become a better scientist, don't hesitate to hit the like button and share this with anyone that you're working with so that everyone can progress a little bit more as a scientist. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.